you know, I'm very pleased with the win. Um, I told them, and I told everybody to listen to me, I've been to Michigan State. I've taken teams to Michigan State and know what can happen when that snowball effects happen. And you, this team has a road win in Division One. Binghamton. They got a win. Uh, I can't remember Colgate or Cornell or somebody like that at home. You aren't what Michigan State made them look like when you can do those things. So we knew that this was going to be a basketball game. Now, did I expect them to come out and make the shots they did in the first half? No, but what we decided, you know, we, we had a game plan, and they were a very poor shooting team from the three coming in. So we stuck with the game plan. We knew that, you know, at halftime, we, we thought they shot it as well as they could possibly shoot it, and it was a tie game. We knew that the wear down effect would take place, and it did. In the last eight minutes of the game, you know, we were far, far and away the better team. And that was how we play, and that's our purpose of how we play. And everybody's going to say you didn't guard anybody in that, but if you look at the stats, they shot 39% from the floor. All right? That makes our team this year now giving up about 40% field goal defense. If that were to continue for the rest of the year, it will far and away be the all time best field goal percent defense in Oakland history. So while it may not to the naked eye look that good, it's working. Our kids believe in it, we believe in it, and I'm almost pissed that I have to come up and defend it and hear what some of the people say to me about it. So it is what it is. This is how we play. This is how we're going to play. And I love this team. So ask questions. Open up questions for the players. Kay Felder and Sharon Rosey Walker. Okay, just in your mind, what was the difference in that final eight minutes and maybe the rest of the game? Do you like you like coach or do you think kind of you wore them down? Yeah, I think we wore them down, you know, with our pressure on the ball and people being in gaps to help each other out on the defensive end. But the start of the game we felt like everybody was just in the doghouse, like our head legs was heavy and we just couldn't do nothing right. They was making everything, so then we just kept Kept the bar pressure up throughout the whole game, and wore, it wore down. And we got we got going, we got a couple easy layups, and that's what triggered our run. Sharon, your uh, rebounding numbers are pretty high this year. You just kind of kind of always attack the basket, kind of crash the boards, and kind of what would you attribute that to? Uh, definitely, that's one of the things our uh, team needs. So we need extra possessions, and I just go in there hard, and give us extra extra possessions, or you try to get fouled. Sean, what about that? You had a, a couple opportunities here today where you had your defender moving. Is that is that a move you look to when you see your defender's feet moving? You go at them and initiate that contact to get uh, to the line? Yeah, definitely. I don't want them to know where I'm at. So, you know, I get that full head of steam and just go in there and get them. Any more questions for the players? All right, guys. They had a lot more 10 minutes <laughs> Questions for Coach Camping? I'll get kind of talk about Sharon's game. I mean, 14 points, eight rebounds, four assists. He didn't miss a shot from the field. Just a pretty efficient game for him. Well, he missed the four free throws, and we can't have that. You know, we, we the way we play, we've got to make free throws because we're going to get to the line more. And we've got to make them. Um, you know, you can say what you want, and, and coaches are always looking for reasons why. We, we were on a long road trip, and we got home, and it's great to be at home, but you can't discount the fact that we've been on the road, and now we have one day back. Now, we did, we did everything we could from a financial standpoint to make it easy, like making sure we flew home right after the game and those types of things so that we would have a chance today. And, and we found a way to win. And we got through that. It was very easy to see that we struggled to put the ball in the basket, and that's something this team doesn't do. We shot unbelievable from the three, and yet we only shot 46%, which for us at home, I, it should be a low point, especially when we're making 43 from the three. So that means our, from the two, we didn't shoot very well. Jalen missed a bunch of shots. Uh, Percy missed a couple of real easy shots. Kay missed some shots going to the basket. Um, I think that's all part of the wear down effect. Now we've got couple days off 
We're going to be at home. Our next road game again, though, but it's only an hour drive. So, you know, I think we got right where we need to be. I feel real good about where we're at. And uh, I think the game went, you know, I would like to have won by 1,000, but I think the game went the way it, when it should. And I will say this, I think the last three years, maybe two years for sure, we would have lost this game. We would have lost this game because, and then we'd be shaking our heads. Milwaukee came in here a couple of years, and that game went the exact same way. You know, we got a big early, and then, you know, and this team found a way to gather themselves, got some easy shots, uh, kept going at it defensively, kept up the pressure, and we wore them down. And, and they, they had some wide open shots in the second half. They had no legs to even shoot. I mean, they had a couple of hit the backboard. That's how tired they were. And that's what we are. That's, that's how we've decided, or I've decided, that this is how we can be the best. And if you look at the history of my teams, we play different based on personnel. And with Martez coming in a week, that gives us another gun in that bullet, or bullet in that gun. And that's another guy that can go up and down and score and defend. And so this, this is how we're going to play. And there are going to be some nights like this. Bottom line is to be ahead at the end. Coach Jalen Hayes had 13 rebounds and five of those were offensive. He seemed to play with a little bit of that junkyard dog mentality. And in terms of rebounding the basketball, that's something I know you've been looking for from him. He had a great defensive five-point game with about four and a half, five minutes to go. He had a great defensive rebound, just one of the best I've ever seen him get, where a guy went around him and tipped it, but he still got it. We came down and he got the offensive rebound and he tried to finish. And I would have wished at that point in the game he'd have kicked it out. But those things are great. But you've got him who can get you 13 rebounds. You got Percy can get you 13 rebounds. You got Dorsey Walker who, who's gotten 16 in a game this year. Martez is a guy that can go get a double figure rebounds. So we have guys, and what we're trying to tell them is if you'll go every night, some days the ball's going to bounce to you, tonight it bounced to Jalen. But if you're around the ball, you're going to have nights like this. With all the guys we got, this should make us a great rebounding team. Another reason I knew that Binghamton wasn't you know, 73 to 33 or whatever, is because I've never seen a team with a plus 10 rebound margin that was 2 and 5. So that means it, that's a product of their schedule that they're 2 and 5 because a plus 10 rebounding margin is unbelievable. I mean, that, if you were to keep that for the whole year, you're going to probably be in the top 10 in the country. And we out-rebounded them, have significantly out-rebounded them. So... I was, I'm really, really pleased with how we're growing as a team and what we're doing. I really see a lot of good things. You know, I, I, I think you can focus on some of the bad things, or you can say, wow, that team, they, they, they won that game by 13 points or 10 points or whatever. You know, they, they got some junkyard dog in them. They're, they're getting better. How much is Sharon, how much is it the position where he's at, and how much is him just an ability you can see he has a nose to shoot the gaps and go in and grab those, especially well, on the offensive boards? I told this story in, in 2013 at the NSA tournament, and I'll tell it again tonight because it's true. I have a dog. You remember this story? I have a dog, and every time the doorbell rings, that dog runs to the front door. Every time. It's never been for him. Not once has it ever been for him. But if that doorbell rings tomorrow, he'll run to it. And that's what Sharon does. Every time he goes, and eventually it's going to get to him. And Sharon's got long arms. He's not a great leaper now. Not a great leaper. You don't see him like Hayes above the rim or Felder above. You know, you'll see Felder go get a defensive rebound, and it looks like he defies gravity. You don't see that out of Sharon. But you see his, his arm up there every time, and he's got good hands, and that's what makes him what he is. And, I, again, I think you'll see that same quality in Martez Walker. And you, you're, we're going to have a lot of guys that can go get the basketball. We're going to get a lot of extra possessions because of them. Is this a game where if you had Martez, you think you might have gone with four guards? Well, I think you're going to see a lot of that during the year. I think that you'll see the way Hooper's playing, we've got to keep him on the floor. The stats show that when Max is on the floor, that's when we're the most efficient. His plus minus is the best on the team. Um, so if he's got to be out there, I think you'll see Martez and Sharon and Kay and Hooper and then Hayes or, or Gibson. And, and Xavier really did a nice job for us today. And you're going to see a mixture of Xavier and Brechtine and some of Femi as the year goes on. I'm just going to keep mixing them. And they're our future, and I'm going to pick their spots to play. 
and they're going to, you, you know, tonight it was Xavier, maybe the next game you'll see uh, Brad. You're going to see those guys getting quality minutes and growing as players so that, you know, in the future they're ready. But it, this, is just, this just isn't their time right now. 